Good morning. Will you join me this morning as we come together and lift our voices? morning and welcome to worship everyone both here in person and those of you who are worshiping with us online we are so glad that you are here on behalf my name is uh, Tom Hooker and I'm the pastor here at Summit United Methodist Church and on behalf of our worship servants who are here helping to lead us in worship our music director Rhonda Berlin our assistant pastor Reverend Connie Hooker and our technology crew of Cheryl Martucci and Nick Heschke, uh, we welcome all of you. Um, if you are new here, if you are one of our guests, uh, if you are here in person, we invite you to fill out one of these communication cards so that we may know who you are and where you're from and that we may be in contact with you. If you are online, we invite you to use the comments section uh, and let us know who you are and where you're worshiping from or send us an email. Also invite you if you have a particular prayer concern to please fill out one of these uh, prayer cards. These cards are located in your pew racks. Um, this morning we uh, complete our series on Paul's letter to the Colossians. Today we're talking about the third place. Let's now begin our worship with these gathering words. This is the place where we are baptized with the fire of the Holy Spirit. This is the place where faith abounds. This is the place where doubts are welcome. This is the place where Christ perfects us and the Spirit completes us. Come, let us worship. Will you stand if you are able and join your voices together to sing, Rejoice, the Lord is King. Well, 
Let us join together in the centering prayer. Let us pray together. Lord Jesus, head of the church, we gather as your church, a community of learners who sometimes struggle to understand. Enable us this morning as we gather for worship to move into a zone of spiritual strength and wisdom. Help us to learn both from you as our teacher and from one another as pilgrim, pilgrims on the way. Amen. I'd like to invite the children to join me for a children's <laughs> message. Let's, uh, can you guys sit over here maybe? Sit on the pew? They want the camera to be able to get the back of your heads. <laughs> so people, on, people that are online know that I'm talking to children. Because when you're sitting here, they don't see that. All they see is me talking, pretending to talk to children. So this is good. So those of you who are... Uh, worshiping at home, here are the children. And I invite you to uh, gather the children around uh, your screen so that they can participate as well. <clears throat> well, you look good this morning. How are you? You feeling okay? Tired. tired. Yeah, you look, ti you look tired. <laughs> All right, so I'm going sh to show you some pictures. And I want you to tell me what these people do just based on what they're wearing. First one. Baseball. So this person plays baseball. Well, that, yeah. OK. Well, here is just an outfit, but it ha doesn't have a person. What does this look like? A gardener. Very good, very good. A gardener. Here's a picture of a gardener with overalls and trimming shears yeah planting right very good okay how about this one astronaut, astronaut. very good yeah oh i forgot to show it to the people online there see an astronaut okay how about this one A mechanic. Very good, Alice. Very good. Okay, this is an easy one. I'll show it to you online. Police officer. Okay. Ah, it could be a doctor. Yeah. Doctor. It could be a nurse or a doctor. Right. Doctor, okay. So you can guess what people do by what they wear, right? <clears throat> okay, you can guess what people do. What about people that are clothed in Jesus? You're probably saying, huh? What is he talking about? Yeah. Can you tell a person... Can you tell if a person is a follower of Jesus by what they wear? No. no. But you can tell if they are. How can you tell? Very good. Excellent. Yeah. You took the words right out of my mouth. By the way they act, we can tell if someone's a Christian. Not by wearing some clothes that say they are clothed in Christ. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I found the picture online. But that doesn't mean that that person is a follower of Jesus, does it? Just because they wear something like that. Right. So we actually need to act like followers of Jesus. People need to see that in us, right? We need to be kind. We need to be generous. We need to be patient. We need to be gentle, helpful. Loving, right? Yeah. So, can we? You think we can do that? Do you think we can do that at home? Do you think we can do that in person? Let's pray. Let's pray. God, we thank you for 
um, <clears throat> the ways in which you touch our lives. And we thank you for teaching us about compassion and gentleness and, and patience and love and, and all the ways in which we can be more like Jesus. So we, pr we pray that you might help us to be more like Jesus so that we, so other people can get to know you as well. And we pray this in his name. Amen. Thanks for joining me, and thanks for helping me, and thanks for joining me at home. Yeah. What's that? Well, you're going to find out in a few moments. scripture lesson this morning is taken from Paul's letter to the Colossians chapter 3 verses 12 through 17 listen for the word of the Lord for you today therefore as God's chosen people holy and dearly loved clothe yourselves with compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to god and whatever you do whether in word or deed do it all in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to god the father through him this is the word of god for the people of god We've been talking the last three weeks about Paul's letter to the Colossians, a letter he wrote to a fledgling church uh, in Asia Minor, which would be current day Turkey. And this was a church made up mostly of Gentiles. And they, were, they had a lot of opposition from their secular culture, which uh, was um, greatly opposed to uh, the church. And so Paul has been writing this letter, this, this letter to the church to encourage them to remain steadfast in, even in the midst of all the challenges that they face and the opposition. And he wants them to stay together in unity. And he says to be rooted in Christ. He reminds them that it is Christ who holds them together, as we talked about a few weeks ago, uh, with the examples of the, the Epsdorf map with Jesus at the center holding the world together, and the example of Laminin, the, uh, um, the cell adhesion molecule in our bodies that's in the shape of a cross. It is Christ who holds us together. And then we talked about the fact that he wants to the Colossian church as well to encourage one another, that they need each other to remain steadfast and to remain rooted in Christ. They can't do this on their own. And so today, Paul says, basically, wear what you are. Now, you've heard the saying, you are what you wear, but I'm not sure how true that is anymore these days. 
um, with our much more relaxed dress codes. You know, it used to be on Sunday morning, you could tell, you could clearly tell who were the churchgoers and who were not. Because the church people all got dressed up. They dressed up in their Sunday best. Most of us probably remember those days. We could tell not that long ago who the ushers were, right? Because they were all asked to wear a tie. You could tell who your, pa your preacher was because at one point, preachers always wore robes, right? You know, when I was in, in my first career in, in the corporate world, um, 18 out of those 21 years, I wore a suit to work every day. So you could always tell who the office workers were. The three years that I didn't was when I was in Tennessee working in a processing plant, and my office was in a trailer, and so there was really no need to wear a suit, except when some corporate bigwig came to town, then we got dressed up. I guess to impress, I don't know. Even in high school, you could always tell when there was a game or a match or a meet. I was on the swim team, and every time that we had, had a swim meet, whether it was home or away, it didn't matter, we had to wear a tie. So you could always tell. Paul says, though, Wear what you are. If you proclaim to be a follower of Christ, then wear that. Put on Christ. Clothe yourselves with, with compassion, with kindness, with humility, with gentleness, with patience, and with love. That's how people will know that you are a follower of Christ. Because as followers of Christ, we are to emulate him. Wouldn't it be great to have a church that, where that is really prominent, where everybody sees that, where the outside world can see that? You know, I don't know if any of you are country music fans or... I'm talking about modern-day country music. Um, I'm not so much, not me, but there was, a, there was a time when we lived in Tennessee when you couldn't get away from it because this was, this was before we had uh, music on our phones or before we had iPods or iPads. Um, we still had cassettes. We had a cassette player in the car, but if you turned on the radio, more than every other radio station was a country station. So you couldn't get away from it. And then I end up going into ministry and I'm serving a church and I'm responsible for youth ministry and I'm taking the youth and some adults on a mission trip, an Appalachia service mission trip. I'm driving a 15 passenger van full of youth and, and our, some of our equipment along with some, and some other people who are uh, driving other vans as well. But in our van, one of the youth asked me if he could put a CD in the CD player. And um, thinking back on it now, I should have asked him, well, what CD do you want to put in there? But I just said, yeah, go ahead. So he puts this CD in, and it's a you know, country rock CD. Toby Keith. And it starts off with this song about a bar. And I'm thinking, oh no, why are we listening to this in this van? But I didn't say anything, I just let it go. And he listened to these words, and some of you might be familiar with this song, but he talks about how much he loves this bar because it's so inclusive. Because in that place, there are people from all walks of life just gathering, getting along with one another. There are people dressed in all different kinds of ways, but they're gathering and getting along with one another. There are people with all kinds of... Now, this is my interpretation, by the way. There are people with all kinds of 
viewpoints, but they're gathering and getting along with one another. And he says when he walks through the door, it puts a smile on his face because he sees all these different people from all walks of life. And they're, they're having a good time and they're getting along. And I'm thinking, isn't that what the church is supposed to be? Isn't that what's supposed to happen in the church? Aren't we all supposed to get along no matter what our viewpoints are, no matter who we are, no matter where we're from, from all different walks of life? Now, I'm not suggesting that we go to bars. No, I'm not suggesting that at all. But what I am suggesting is that the church needs to listen to that and be more inclusive. Open ourselves up to people from all walks of life. Because I think that's what Paul is really saying here in this letter to the Colossians, in the third chapter in these verses that Connie read for you this morning. I think he's saying we ought to show our compassion, our kindness, our gentleness, our humility, our patience, our love, our forgiveness, and get along with one another. Be who God created us to be. Be more like Jesus. And I believe that's what Paul is saying. Now, I'm not, I'm not one for bars, but there is a particular kind of bar that I do like. You see, I like the coffee bars. So welcome to my cafe. I love to hang out in coffee bars, cafes. You know, when I, when I was in my previous appointment, um, I had a, the office and the church and the parsonage were all really, really close together. So there were times I just felt I needed to get away to get, get my work done. So I often frequented a coffee shop. Sometimes the, you know, the change like a Starbucks, but sometimes a local coffee shop, like my favorite was the, a farmhouse that was turned into a coffee shop. And I did a lot of work in those places. I had meetings in those places. I met with people. A lot of sermons were, were developed in those places, in the cafes. It was my third place. We all need a third place. You know, we have homes. That's our first place. And we love to be at home. We love to be with our families and the people we love most of the time. And then we have a second place that's usually work, unless we're retired. And work, maybe it's a place you like to be and maybe it's not, but you know you have to be there. And so we all need a third place to, to get away from it all, to just hang out and meet people and be with people. And I think that's the cafes, that's the coffee shops. In the early 1980s, on a trip, on his travels through Italy, Howard Schultz noticed something. He noticed that the Italians were frequenting these, these coffee bars. And they were there all the time. They were there before work, they were there sometimes during work, and they were there after work. They were there on weekdays and on weekends. And it wasn't just a quick grab and go on your way to work coffee that they went to purchase. They went there to hang out. They sat there to, to and not to drink their large you know, mugs of coffee. No, no, no. You know, they would take their small little espressos and drink espresso, take a sip, and then have some conversation, and then take another sip. And they would just hang out there. And he noticed how more, much more relaxed they were, how, how much of a good time they were having, even when they were working there. It was in such a more relaxed environment. And he thought about that for a moment, and he thought, you know, this is what we need in America. We need a third place. And so he came back home, and that's how he started Starbucks. 
Now, I don't think it's just about Starbucks. I think he started a caf coffee cafe revolution because now you see them popping up all over the place in large cities and small towns. They're everywhere. And they're great places to hang out. They're great places to be. But I think about that again, and I think, shouldn't the church be that third place for us? What if the church, no, there was a time when the church was the third place, when people came to church, not just Sunday morning, but throughout the week. And what if we went back to that? What if we were that third place where people could just hang out, not just Sunday morning, but throughout the week? Where people could meet, where they could talk, where they could just have some conversation and connect with one another. Where they could spend time and help each other to learn and exhibit those qualities that Paul talks about, that compassion and, and kindness and, and gentleness and humility and patience and forgiveness and love. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be the kind of place that you'd want to be at? Wouldn't that be the kind of place that you want to visit on a more frequent basis? I think that's what we need to do as a church. We need to be more inclusive, inviting people from all walks of life. We need to exhibit those characteristics that Paul talks about. We need to accept everyone. That doesn't mean we have to agree on everything. Certainly not. But it does mean we have to love and respect everyone. We worship together. We work and serve together. We learn together. And we connect together. We come into a closer and deeper relationship with Christ by being together. What I'm suggesting is, you know, we have a cafe area, but we only use that on Sunday mornings. During the week, it's usually only Lori and I here in our offices. What if we opened up the church? What if we had some folks that were willing to, to be the host at the cafe and, and to make some coffee and just to be a place where we can come and hang out. Anyone could come and hang out and just have some conversation. What if we did that? What do you think that would look like? It might begin to look like a third place, a place where people can come and get to know each other and, as a result, get to know Christ. You see, we can't grow in our faith all by ourselves. I think that's what Paul keeps saying to us. We can't do this on our own. We need community. And it's more than just about community on Sunday morning. It's about community throughout the week. I think of the example that I've used before. I've used this, used it here, but it bears repeating. And this is the example from the great reformer Martin Luther, who was sitting in a with some friends around the a fire. And someone asked him a question. He was asked, why do we need the church? And Luther didn't say a word. He just got up, he picked up some fireplace tongs, went to the fire, and grabbed the hot glowing coal out of the fire. And then he placed it on the ground in front of his friends. And they watched that hot, glowing coal diminish in its glow until finally it went completely out. When it was out, he picked up the fireplace tongs again, grabbed the coal, and placed it back in the fire. And it quickly began to glow again and it became red hot again. That's why we need the church, because we can't do this by ourselves. Believe me, I've tried. It doesn't work. We need each other. 
and we need a third place. Let's make that third place Summit United Methodist Church. Let's make this the third place for us. And we can say, I love this place. Amen. We come now to our time of response to God through our prayers and lifting up of joys and concerns. And I want to start with the concerns this morning. Um, you'll note there is a memorial candle on the uh, communion table. And that memorial ca candle is in memory of Jim Fitzrider, a member who, of this congregation who had moved to Florida and passed away on August the 3rd. Um, there is a prayer request for traveling mercies for family, um, for a brother-in-law in Tennessee, and as always, let us remember our nation and the world in our prayers, as well as our community and our own congregation. Now, the joys that we have to share this, uh, this morning uh, you'll notice the rosebud on the altar, and that is in honor of Dylan, Dylan Catherine Stringinger. It's the daughter of Katie and Tim Stringinger, born July 25th. Katie is the director of the, the Y uh, daycare and preschool that is downstairs. Um, and Dylan has a big brother named Carson, so congratulations to that family. And I have a, another joy to share this morning. Um, yesterday, on Saturday, Pastor Connie graduated from um, a two-year program put on by the Center of Spiritual Formation to become a certified spiritual director. So Connie is now a certified spiritual director. She is certified. <laughs> So here in this congregation, we have our own spiritual director. All right, let us uh, turn to God in prayer this morning. O oh, gracious and ever-loving God, we come here to refresh ourselves and to worship you, to bring honor and glory to you. But we also come here to support and encourage one another. And so it is our prayer that you might help us and teach us how to do that, how to be open and welcoming, how to help each other to be more like Christ. Teach us your ways, O oh God. And may we be ever faithful in following. We celebrate. We celebrate the ways in which you have touched our lives through new births, through gifts, that can be so fully utilized in your kingdom. Thank you, God, for ways in which each of us has been called. But we also come to you with concerns, oh God, and concerns we pray for, for the Fitzrider family. We pray that you might comfort them in their loss. And we pray for 
a brother-in-law in Tennessee, Jim Healy, and we pray for those who are traveling. We pray for your guiding presence and direction in all of your ways that you might be with us. We pray, God, for our church, for this congregation, that you might lead us according to your direction, that you might guide us with resources to help us to follow your will and to do what you would ask us to do. May we continue to be faithful in that respect. And we pray for our community, for our city, our county, and those surrounding us. We pray for healing and peace and care. May we be your hands and feet to those who are struggling. We pray for our nation and our world, for leaders and for people. We pray that they might turn to you and that you might guide them towards peace and love and your care. May we always remember to put you first. And we pray all of this in the matchless and mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. When we invest in the work to which God calls us, our whole lives are drawn into fulfilling our relationships with God and with people who we can help. So do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to share. We can present our gifts in a number of ways, whether we're here in person or whether you're online. We can, use, we can present our gifts to God through electronic means by using our church website or the church app. And very soon, we will be creating a video to show you how to do that if you're not already familiar with it. But there are instructions on how to do that, I believe, um, in the, uh, this week's flash. And if you can help us create that video, we would love to hear from you. Um, you can also give by sending in your offerings to the church office. Or if you are here in person, you can deposit it in the offering uh, plate that is located at the entry exit to our sanctuary. And a note on that, and that is that very soon we will be uh, passing that offering plate again. So. We are looking for ushers. So if you were an usher previously or you have never been an usher and would like to be an usher, please contact Frank Walker because we would love to get a rotation of ushers back in play for the in-person worship. Let us then present our offerings to God this morning and let us pray. O oh, gracious and ever-loving God, we thank you for all the gifts that you have blessed us with and the ways in which you have called us to share our resources to do your kingdom work. And so it is our prayer that these gifts that we offer may be fully utilized to help build your kingdom. And we pray this all in Christ's name. Amen. Please join me in the online response. Let us be ready. God comes in unexpected times and in unexpected places. Let us dress for action. God has work for us and requires as well as our hearts and minds. Let us dress for love and compassion. God asks us to keep our lamps lit and to be the light of the world. Let us be ready. And now for the online dismissal.
remember that when you are sent from this place, that Jesus goes before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beneath to sustain you, above to watch over you, beside you as your friend, and within you to give you peace. Amen. Go in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.